Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and I'll be doing a tutorial on the advanced features of this WD MyCloud EX4100 Expert Series 4 Bay pre-configured NAS. This is the 16 terabyte version. Be sure to check out my first video on the WD MyCloud NAS on JTL to find out more about this product. I'll show you how to operate your NAS with a closer look at the MyCloud OS. I've already shown you how to register your NAS in the first video. We're looking at the MyCloud OS 1, not MyCloud OS 3. On the homepage, you'll see the capacity of your drives broken into multiple categories as well as a look at the diagnostics and firmware updater. Currently, there's only one user, just me. You can add users by clicking on the plus icon. I currently have two cloud devices connected to my NAS, my desktop PC and smartphone. There's even a section that shows the device activity. You can also add and manage users and groups in the users tab. To keep your documents extra safe, there's an option to change your user's access permissions for only the files you wish for them to see. The same applies to groups as well. Onto the share section. This is where you can create folders for storing and sharing your files. There are currently three shares on default, public, WD Smartware, and Time Machine Backup. If you want to turn off a certain folder to the public, users on your network, just click this area to change from public access to private. There's a host of other options like recycle bin, op blocks, and the like. You can delete and add shares via these two icons. Let's create a folder called JTL. Go to WD MyCloud EX4100 under network on your PC. You will find the newly created JTL folder here. Let's create a folder called Photos. You can drag and drop files directly from your PC or external drive to the NAS. From here, your files can be accessed via your network or online. You can also see the updates on your WD MyCloud mobile app. Here's a look at cloud access. Since I've already registered the product, let's move on. Now let's run through the backups options. You can backup to and from a USB device by clicking on Create Job. Do remote backups? Please follow the instructions listed here. And internal backups from one storage location to another on the WD MyCloud system. Of course, there's cloud backups and you can even plug in a camera and create that backup. This is where you can change up the RAID configuration. There's an option to automatically rebuild RAID volumes when you add or remove drives. The NAS is currently set up in RAID 5. Click the Change RAID Mode icon if you prefer something else. You can configure in JBOD, and I really like how there's an explanation as to what each setting does to your drives. There's spanning, RAID 0, the most commonly used RAID config for performance boost, RAID 1, which involves two copies of your data recorded on separate drives, so one will function if the other fails. RAID 5, the current setting, is similar to RAID 0 in striping data across three or more drives for that performance edge. But RAID 5 has a fault tolerance feature. You get better performance with RAID 0 though. Finally, there's RAID 10, data is striped and mirrored. You can also check your disk status. Everything seems to be in good order. Here's where you can create and manage ISCSI targets. This provides storage that is accessed over a network rather than locally. And volume virtualization allows you to map to other ISCSI targets and present them as volumes on your WD MyCloud system. There's also apps. The app section allows for HTTP, FTP, and P2P downloads. HTTP lets you download files directly from the web to your NAS. FTP manages the transfer of files from your NAS to a client. P2P allows you to use peer-to-peer -peer services to download torrents. There's even a web file viewer so you can access your files via the web. Click into the folder of choice and your files should be available for download and other options. This icon allows you to add apps to your WD MyCloud system, such as Dropbox, something I use every so often. Plex Media Server organizes all of your video, music, and photo collections so you can stream them to all of your screens. There's WordPress and other apps. Let's add the Dropbox feature to the NAS system. It'll appear below the web file viewer. You can now remove apps via this icon. The Dropbox app will sync content between your device and Dropbox account. Very handy. Go to Configure and sign into your account. Yay, it looks like my account has been linked, woohoo! Syncing is done, and don't forget to set your local sync folder. Finally, we have Settings. This is where you can toggle the language and clock settings, as well as the Energy Saver feature. Under the Network is where you can play with the Network Service settings, Windows Services, and more. The Media tab allows you to turn on DLNA Media Streaming for content streaming to other devices, and there's an iTunes Player option too. You can run diagnostics under Utilities, Restore to Default, Format Disk, and the like. There's also the option to send notifications to yourself if there's a problem with the system. And of course, make sure to keep your NAS updated with the latest firmware. That wraps it up for this tutorial on the WD MyCloud EX4100 Expert Series 4 Bay pre-configured NAS. Stay tuned for one more video on this product. I'd like to thank WD for partnering with me to make this video. And if you're interested in purchasing or learning more about the MyCloud Expert Series NAS, be sure to click the link in the description below. Also hop on over to WD's own YouTube channel to check out what they've got going on there. I guess all that's left to say is see you next time.